Hey guys, welcome back. In this short video, I'll be showing you another extremely useful tip that I've used many times over the years when working on cars, boats, jet skis, scooters, as well as appliances. Doing as I'm about to show you will allow you to make a very strong connection between two wires without the use of a soldering iron. The stranded wire sizes most commonly used are number 18 and number 16, which this method is perfect for. To use this method with larger stranded copper wire such as number 12 or number 14, all that's required is one simple change that I'll mention shortly. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is strip the insulation back about a half of an inch on each wire. After the insulation has been removed, you want to make sure the copper strands are bright and shiny. Now the ones here are not really bright and shiny, so they're going to have to be cleaned and the best way to do that is using a single edge razor blade. Just take the blade and just go like that. Keep rotating the wire around and this is the best way to do it. You don't want to use sandpaper or abrasive paper. Just keep rolling it around and as you can see that wire right now is perfect. Now let me do the same for the one over here. Okay, you're going to take the two wires, go like that. Then you're going to twist them together. Make a nice tight wrap. All right, and right there, you can see we have a strong mechanical connection. Make sure the space where there's no insulation is only about a half of an inch to five eighths of an inch wide. Do not make it too wide. Now let me show you what we're gonna do next. Now you're going to need on hand a small amount of 6040 rosin coarse solder and the diameter of the wire is 0.032 to 0.04 if you're going to be working on number 16 or number 18 stranded copper wire. If you're going to be working on number 12 or number 14 stranded copper wire, you're going to want to use a thicker diameter wire. Instead of 0.032 to 0.04, you might want to use around 0.06. Do not use lead-free solder. Make sure you use 60% tin and 40% lead. It flows much better. And you do not have to worry about getting it on your fingers when you're done. Just wash your hands with soapy water. Before twisting the wires together, make sure you slit a piece of heat shrink tubing over. This is very inexpensive. You can pick this up at Harbor Freight or online. Just make sure the diameter is a little larger than the diameter of the wire with the splice. You're also going to need some no clean liquid rosin flux and it's very inexpensive. I'll place links in the video description area for the solder, the flux, as well as the heat shrink tubing. Besides a small flush cutter like you see right here, you're also going to need a lighter. I picked this one up at the dollar store. It's perfect. It has that long end that sticks out. All right, so let me show you what you have to do. You're going to cut off a two inch length of solder from the spool. Once the solder is cut, you're going to go to the left side and you're going to do three wraps around the end of the wire. Now I'm doing this in front of the camera, so it's not easy. So let me do the three wraps, which is very easy to do, and I'll come right back. Okay, you can see the solder has been wrapped around the stranded copper wire splice three times on the left side. Now you're going to take the wire and you're going to bend it straight across the top like this. All right, push it down. What you want is you want that wire to stay along the top of the copper wire. Once that's done, you're gonna do three wraps on the right side, and then you're just gonna trim the solder flush. Let me do that, and I'll come right back. Okay, this is what it looks like when it's completed. Three wraps on the left, go straight across the top, and then do three wraps on the right. Keep in mind, this does not take long to do, and once you do it a few times, it gets easier and easier. Now we're going to take the liquid rosin, and we're going to apply two drops. Let's put one over there and one over there. Now you're going to take the lighter and you're going to have the flame positioned directly under the wire. You do not want to have the flame going against the solder here or there. You want the wire to get hot enough to melt the solder. And you want the flame on the lighter to be medium to low, you do not want a huge flame, and you're also going to want to position the flame as shown.
And right here is a close-up showing how beautifully they flow together. Now you're going to take the heat shrink tubing, slide it over the repair area, and heat it up. And there you have a perfectly soldered wire without the use of a soldering iron. I hope you enjoyed this tip. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.